Agra, once the capital of India, a city filled with history and colors, has seen the rise and fall of empires and sultanates. Their engineering skills aggressive demolitions and re-engineering. The city has always loved the vibe of the locals and tourists equally and immersed itself in the trends and vogues of today, a rapidly changing affair since its founding in the year 1504. I have learned that Mughal Emperor Akbar the Great had invited Jesuit priests from Goa to learn more about Christianity. So, Father Rudolf Aquavua, Father Antonio de Montserrat, and Father Francois Henriques reached Fatehpur Sikri, the capital of Akbar, on 28th February 1580. Inspired and attracted, by Christianity, Akbar gave land to Jesuit fathers to build a church in Agra, the first Roman Catholic church in the Mughal Empire, built by Akbar, which is now known as the Church of Pieta. Thus, this church is the precursor to my Genesis. You must be wondering who I am. I have been a wellspring to those who seek knowledge, transforming children into responsible citizens and good human beings. I am an ideal workplace for educators, a resplendent piece of prolific architecture in the middle of the city. I am St. Peter's College, standing magnificent and tall at my venerable age of 175 years. Oh, it has been 175 years already. All I remember are the smiling faces and memories of my first batch who were yet to graduate then. The echoes of esteem and regard of my efficacy can be heard all over the city and the nation at large. This grey and white edifice and picturesque campus of about 50 acres is one of its kind of Roman architecture in the country. When people visit me, their worries begin to fade away in my lush green fields and my aesthetically pleasing campus welcomes them. But what lies in the middle of my heart is what makes me complete. The statue of my beloved patron, Saint Peter. I derive some of my qualities from him, including the title of being called Rock, a symbol of excellence in the field of education. The missionary labors of the most reverend Joseph Anthony Borghi, OFM CAP, and his devotedness to the cause of education was well known throughout India. Known for his zeal and energy, he founded a few educational institutions in Agra, namely St. Patrick's Junior College and St. Joseph's Intercollege. The Cathedral Church and St. Patrick's Church are testimonies to his architectural expertise. I was founded by him too on 1st April 1845 at Sardhana. He then transferred me to Jamnabag, Agra and then to the present location in 1846, which is considered to be my founding year. There were many people of great erudition who were instrumental in my growth to the stature I have achieved. There were also great philosophers, intellectual icons 
and luminaries who nurtured me. They include Most Reverend Kajetan Kali, OFM Cap, 1849 to 1856. Most Reverend Ignatius Persico, OFM Cap, 1856 to 1861. Most Reverend Angelicus Bejenek, OFM Cap, 1861 to 1865. Most Reverend Michelangelo Jacopi. OFM cap 1868 to 1891 Most Reverend Emmanuel Van den Bush OFM cap 1892 to 1897 Most Reverend Charles Gentilly OFM cap 1898 to 1916 Most Reverend Rafael Bernacchionev OFM cap 1917 to 1937 and most reverend evangelist vani ofm cap 1937 to 1955 the most reverend dr dominic athed who shepherded the archdiocese from 1956 to 1982 made untiring and unflagging efforts to put me on the educational map of the country The most reverend Dr Cecil de Sa made significant headway in implementing many reforms for my comprehensive growth from 1984 to 1998. The most reverend Dr Vincent Consasau in the short span of one year from 1999 to 2000 gave me unstinted support taking care of me. The most reverend Dr Oswald Gracious a renowned canonist gave a phenomenal fillip to education which benefited me in the long run my primary wing was constructed during his tenure from 2000 to 2006 the most reverend Dr Albert de Souza took over the reins of the archdiocese on April 11 2007 He was instrumental in establishing a number of educational institutes, my sister concerns and many centers of social activities. My portal, the yoga gallery, yoga hall and this very auditorium are tokens of his love for me because he has always held me close to his heart. My administrative arrangement in the first 125 years or so was in the hands of a rector who was the chief administrative officer the rectors down the ages include reverend father momet secular priest 1846 to 1851 reverend father bonaventure oc 1852 reverend father barry secular priest for a few months Reverend Father Louis OC 1853 to 1854 and 1858 to 1862 Reverend Father Keegan secular priest 1855 Reverend Father Gatney secular priest 1856 to 1857 Reverend Father Macken secular priest 1857 to 1858 Reverend Brother Bothian Christian Brother 1862 Reverend Brother Gregory Christian Brother 1863 Reverend Father Symphorian OC 1863 to 1882 Reverend Father Odia OC 1883 Reverend Father Genesius OC 1883 to 1889 Reverend Father Rafael OC 1893 and 1897 to 1904 Reverend Father Joseph Carley OC 1893 to 
Reverend Father Engelbert, O.C., 1895-1897. Reverend Father Christopher O.C., 1904-1906. Reverend Father Norman D.D., 1906-1921. Reverend Father Hyacinth O.C., 1921-1925. 1926 to 1934 and 1947 to 1951 Reverend Father John O.C. April 1925 to April 1926 Reverend Father Leo O.C. 1934 Reverend Father Pius Leons O.C. 1941 to 1947 Reverend Father Anthony OFM Cap, 1952-1956 Reverend Father Rafael OFM Cap, 1957-1962 and Reverend Father Lawrence OFM Cap, 1962-1966 The rector was assisted by a headmaster to look after the teaching extracurricular activities and general discipline. M. Dunn was the first headmaster from 1883 to 1892, followed by Father Joseph Carrelly from 1892 to 1894, Father Correa 1895-1898, B. Paul 1899-1905, Father H. Norman, 1906 to 1921. A. E. Finimo, 1921 to 1927. E. S. Merriman, 1928 to 1956. E. J. Orpwood, 1957 to 1958. And A. Pakium, 1960 to 1967. This old arrangement of rectorship was replaced by a single functionary that is principal. The leadership, commitment, passion and devotion of those who steered me coupled with their meticulous planning and decisions created a profound effect on my students' learning curve and my overall development. Their hard work, caliber, and acumen helped me ascend greater heights. Father Columban Gomes was the first principal. He was at the helm of affairs for a decade from 1966 to 1976. Many important activities took place during his principalship which helped me to widen my horizons. Father Alexander took me under his wings in 1976. He remained in office for a period of two years. In 1978, Father Jerome de Souza became my guiding light. His tenure witnessed overall development in academics and co-curricular fronts. Father Sebastian Pantaladi succeeded Father Jerome in 1983. He was the first diocesan priest to hold the post of principal till 1986. To cope with increasing numbers, new sections were opened during his tenure. Father Jose Maliakal took over as principal in 1986 and remained on that post for one year. He ensured that the students have a productive environment to learn. Father George Paul took care of me from 1987 to 1995. During his term, stress was given to extracurricular activities like games, sports, 
dramatics, debates, etc. I saw academic excellence reaching new heights during his principalship. Father Dennis de Souza tended to me from 1995. It was during his principalship I celebrated the sesquicentennial, which was another landmark in my history. His motto was discipline with love, but never compromise with anyone indulging in indiscipline. I was under the care of Father Matthew Komblemutil from 2001 to 2007. It was during his principalship my primary section wing was constructed. He maximized learning potential of students by developing a fear-free ambience in the college, which helped develop a strong bond between the students and the teachers. Father John Ferreira succeeded Father Matthew in 2007. His tenure witnessed the construction of the main gate, the yoga gallery, yoga hall, basketball court, tennis court and the badminton court. The statue of Christ the Redeemer was also erected. He proved that yoga not only nourishes the body of students, but also brings discipline in their lives. I was entrusted to the care of Father Dr. Paul Tanikal in 2013. His principalship was known for stress on discipline and academics. The renovated senior section block and the Archbishop Albert de Souza Episcopal Silver Jubilee Memorial Hall were constructed during his principalship. I started my guided journey with Reverend Father Andrew Correa in July 2019. He has left no stone unturned to uphold my tradition and legacy. My once 75 years of serving the nation is being celebrated under his able guidance. There were a few men of wisdom who helped the administration in grooming and molding me to what I am today. One of them being Brother Oliver Mendes, who contributed exponentially to my well-being for more than two decades. I also enjoyed the support and patronage of the managers, namely Father Stephen Kolandeswamy, Father Bhaskar Jesuraj, and Father Dr. Paul Tanikal. From the year 1987, for better supervision and management, my administration was divided into senior, middle, and primary sections. And since then, middle and primary wings are looked after and taken care by vice principal and headmistress, respectively, under the able guidance of the principal. Vice principals include Reverend Father Thomas Paramundail, followed by Monsignor K.C. Thomas from 1970 to 1971. Reverend Father Jose Maliakal, 1978 to 1982. Reverend Father George Paul, 1981 to 1983. Reverend Father Sebastian Pantaladi, 1982 to 1983. Reverend Father George Paul, 1984 to 1985. Most Reverend Rafi Manjali, the Archbishop-elect of Agra, 1987 to 1988. Most Reverend 
Joseph Thaikatil, Bishop of Gwalior Diocese, 1988 to 1989. Reverend Father Simon Lopez, 1990 to 1997. Reverend Father Andrew Correa, 1997 to 2000. Reverend Father Paul Matthew, 2002 to 2005. Reverend Father Dr. Robert Wagis, 2005 to 2008. Reverend Father Roy Dolphus, 2008 to 2009. Reverend Father Prakash De Souza 2009 to 2012 Reverend Father John Roshan Pereira 2012 to 2014 Reverend Father Francis De Souza 2014 to 2016 Reverend Father Praveen De Costa 2016 to 2018 Reverend Father Lawrence Viraja 2018 to 2020 and Reverend Father Santish Anthony 2020 to date Headmistresses include Sister Anne Joseph 1984 to 1987 Sister Hugo 1987 to 1989 Sister Daisy Matthew 1989 to 1995 Sister Albert Maria 1995 to 1998 Late Sister Annie Flossy 1998 to 2001 Sister Peter 2001 to 2007 Sister Barson 2007 to 2010 Sister Bridget Mary 2010 to 2015 and Sister Daisy Maria 2016 to date Some people remember me from the events they have seen me hosting ranging from my annual commemorations sports cultural events of festivities the zeal with which my students and teachers have organized those activities fills me with pride every time i think about them my hard earned reputation which has been the blessing of my family have led dignitaries like the prince of wales the duke and the duchess of connaught the duke of edinburgh Viceroys like Lord Northbrook and Lord Ripon, governors of Uttar Pradesh, and the ambassadors of the Holy See, to pay visit to my campus. Even eminent personalities like leading sportsman Vijay Hazare, actor singer Kishore Kumar, late Ajit Wadekar, Milka Singh, Kapil Dev. P.T. Yusha, Manjit Dua, Madanla, Rajivardhan Rathor, late Sunil Dutt, Madanlal Sharma, former Olympian and captain of Indian hockey team Mr. Ashok Kumar Dhyanchand, Murli Kartik, former international cricketer Nayan Mongia, women international cricketer. Deepthi Sharma Indian weightlifter Karnam Maleswari former Indian cricket team captain Ajay Jadeja Jackie Shroff Harbhajan Singh and recently Mohammad Kaif and the world renowned wrestler Dalip Singh Rana better known as the great Kali called on me I have also been blessed with the visits of most reverend dr pedro lopez quintana the apostolic nuncio to india and nepal his excellency mr shiv shankar mukherjee 
alumnus and former Indian ambassador in Nepal. His Excellency Mr. Hamid Karzai, the former President of Afghanistan, late Mr. Rajesh Pilot, Kiran Bedi, IPS, Mr. Francis Phantom, former Chief Executive and Secretary, Council for Indian School Certificate Examinations, and film actor Rahul Roy. Since my inception, I have devoted myself to a child's holistic development. And for that, I have made it a point to consistently update and adapt myself with the newer generation's co-curricular requirements, be it in sports, games, or practical education. The grandeur of the laurels and accolades won by my students and alumni are unparalleled be it in sports or cultural activities. It is this success of my students that has won me the title of one of the best institutions of the nation. I have produced scholars, artists, businessmen and laureates. Some of my sons have represented the country on an international scale. Some have received the highest award in their respective fields, including Padma Shri, and some have served in various verticals, including the armed forces, science, medicine, sports, media, and business. For this, I am indebted to the qualified set of wise teachers who devoted their life in the service of my students and taught them lessons beyond the classrooms. Be it the first revolt of 1857, the British colonial rule, the declaration of independence, partition of India or the rise of democracy in the country. I have been here and I have seen India grow and transform into a powerful and proud nation. As the years have passed by, I have seen and experienced the countless sweet and bitter memories of the generations of students who have been a part of my family, be it in their innocent quarrels during recess or the lovely friendships and bonds made in my classrooms, or the feeling of oneness among teachers and students. My journey has been one filled with emotions. I am overwhelmed when students reunite at my premises and it always leaves me teary-eyed seeing them grow big and wise in this world. I am what people see me as, a school, a workplace, a place of worship a stage or a playground. At this 175th anniversary, I wish to tell all the people who have loved me tremendously that they will be enshrined in my heart and I will continue to exist in the annals of history, personifying my grey and white stripes to history, honour and success. I am also grateful to the Almighty for protecting and safeguarding me and sharing His choicest blessings upon me and all associated with me. Mm-hmm.